GHS 17. In John chapter 17, we're learning tonight from verse 20 all through to verse 26. John chapter 17, reading from verse 20. It says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all, that they all, that they all, all the believers, all real children of God saved, now getting sanctified, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one and uh, even as we are one, I in them, verse 23, and thou in me, that they may be one, they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast lodged them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Where is he? Where are you going? will be there in Jesus' name. 
that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world, O righteous Father. The world has not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. As you look at those uh, verses, you see in verse 20, in verse 20 it says, Neither prayer for these alone. What does that mean? He was praying, look at verse 9. In verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. He was praying for his immediate disciples, those who are before him. And now, at the end of that prayer, praying for their sanctification. Praying for the second walk of grace in their hearts. He said, I'm not just praying for these 12 alone. I'm not praying for these immediate disciples alone. I am praying for other people. I'm praying for those who will hear my word through them and believe me through them and get saved through them. That means he was praying for all the Christians, all the believers that will come after that time. And then he goes on to say that he was praying so that when they were sanctified in verse 21, that they all may be one. What he meant by that is they all, the believers of that time and the believers of this time, the believers of the first century and the believers of every century that followed, that they all may be one. Those foundational believers and those of us who are coming in at this final age of the time, it says that they may all be one, as thou art, as thou father art in me, and I in thee. It wasn't talking of union. There is a union. What, you, what union means is that you are the way you are, I'm the way I am, and then we have a union together, some togetherness. Physically, we're together, but in heart, we're not together. In mind, we're not together. In doctrine, we're not together. In experience, we're not together. In attitude, we're not together. It's just a union. It's an association. Association of, you know, this one is doing that, this one is doing that, and then association, affiliation together. But was talking about unity. And it says that they all may be one. As thou, Father, Arch in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, not one outside us, not one. Some of them are with the Pharisees, not in Christ, some of them are with the Sadducees, not in Christ, and some of them are with you know, whatever uh, paths of darkness, and not in Christ, but one in us. That is, a work had been done in them. They were saved, and all the things of sin, evil, evil things, they'll be taken away. And it says that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Tonight, we are looking at the message, uh, the glorious privilege of sanctified believers in Christ. The glorious privilege of sanctified believers in Christ. Sanctified believers in Christ are highly favored by Christ. The Lord has pleasure in them, and they are honored, they are blessed, and they are made useful. It says, when they are sanctified, and they come together, and they are united, as the Father and the Son are united, the world will believe. They will attract the world. They will draw the world into the kingdom. They will be useful. The privilege we have as sanctified believers very many. Number one, there's the privilege of purity. He purifies the heart, he sanctifies the heart, and he makes the heart holy. Number two, there is the priestly prayer. That he is, is our high priest, and because we belong to him, the privilege we have is that he prays for us as our high priest. Not only that, number three, there's partnership. Now, because we agree together, 
were united together there is this partnership with the lord number four there is a preference he prefers his people he loves the fellowship of his people he thinks about us first in fact the bible calls us the bride of christ and as the husband will think about the wife the first person in his life that he will think about the same thing christ thinks about the believers and especially when we're sanctified there is a preference for us number five there is protection he says i've kept them when i was with them now holy father keep them from evil and how he prays for our sanctification and then number six there's progress because he says through them the world will come into the kingdom and the work of god will prosper in our hands like the work is going to prosper in your hand and then eventually there is paradise look at look at verse 24 there in verse 24 it says father i will i desire i want and i want this i decree that they also whom thou hast given me be with thee be with me where i am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou loved me before the foundation of the world you see what jesus christ was doing it was lifting us up it was raising us up and he wanted us to have a great privilege jesus christ our lord jesus christ our savior jesus christ our sanctifier prayed and made adequate provision for the sanctification of all believers who had been saved there is first of all salvation in fact he told his own disciples all those 70 when they returned he said rejoice not because the evil spirits are subject unto you but rejoice because your names are written in heaven not only that he sent them out to go and preach repentance he couldn't have sent them out to go and preach repentance if they had not repented. These ones were already saved. He said, they're not of the world, even as I am not of the world. But then he prayed for another thing now. Saved, there's still something more. Converted, there's still something more. Born again, there's still something more. Your name in the book of life in heaven, there's still something more. And that's what we're looking at. He prayed for their sanctification. It's an experience of the Christian life subsequent to salvation. Salvation is the foundation. Salvation is the force. And then there is sanctification, a second work of grace. What does that do? It brings a deeper inner humility when somebody is sanctified there's a deep humility and meekness within him not only that it brings a deeper inner holiness there, there is holiness when you are born again all the things you were doing before that were not right you have turned away from them but now you are sanctified and from the inside there's a deeper holiness and there is honesty honesty you see when you are sanctified dishonesty will not have any shade and any size in your life at all there's humility there is a holiness there is a, there is a honesty there's a happier home when you're sanctified show me a sanctified husband a sanctified wife living together there'll be unity among them there'll be happy there'll be peace between them they'll not be thinking of you know i'm going to pack out I'm I'm going to divorce i'm going to do this and that no when sanctification comes he removes all those adam all those things that smell of adamic nature there's a happier home there's a higher honor higher honor heaven honors you and the people who know you like they respect you because they can see the transparency there there's heaven mindedness heavenly mindedness what is sanctification because you're seeking things above now not things on earth you want to impress heaven you want to please heaven you want to please the almighty god and then there is heavenly hope when there is sanctification because they say follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord and because you know by the grace of god you are saved by the grace of god you are sanctified when you hear of the rapture you are not afraid when you hear of death you are not afraid you know sudden death will be sudden glory and that if jesus will come at any time your hope is in heaven and because of that heavenly hope you're always happy and joyful to come to as Psalm 24, I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 24, I'm reading here from verse 3. 
it says who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place and it says he that has clean hands that salvation that salvation that's the first work of grace it cleanses your hand he forgives your sin and then all those uh, pilfering and stealing and all those sins they are all gone he that has clean hands and a pure heart that's the sanctification right there those are the people that are getting ready to get to heaven he wants uh, holiness within and holiness without we're looking at some 51 is some 51 I'm reading from verse 6 some 51 we're reading from verse 6 it says behold thou desirest is truth in the inward parts it's not just like you know a whitewashed uh, sepulcher somebody who looks clean and looks white and looks all right and looks upright and looks righteous on the outside on the inside in your heart in your attitude in your inner life there is this work of grace that has happened and it says behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom purge me with Aesop and I shall be clean wash me tell me wash me and tell me out aloud I shall be whiter than snow. I, I want you to see something here. Put your, uh, leave your uh, finger there in uh, Psalm 51. But come to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 18. I want you to make some comparison here. In Isaiah chapter 1. And I'm reading here from verse 18. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. See what the word of God is saying here in verse Say it him. It says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Do your sins be as scarlet? They shall be as, tell me, white as snow. That's salvation. That's salvation. Somebody is a sinner. And then he comes to the Lord and he repents. He says, Lord, I'm sorry. Sincerely, I'm sorry. Deeply, I'm sorry. I feel bad because of the things I've done. I've offended you. Please forgive me and cleanse my sins away. And the Lord says, He will forgive. The Lord will forgive. And he says, they shall be as white as snow. And though the bread are crimson, they shall be as wool. Remember that? Remember that salvation as white as snow. Come back to uh, chapter 51 of the Psalms. Look at Psalms now in verse, uh, verse 7. Put me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, tell me. White as snow, what is that? salvation whiter than snow what is that sanctification uh, you know that one is greater that one is higher that one is cleaner that one is whiter i shall be whiter than snow we're looking at ezekiel ezekiel chapter 36 ezekiel chapter 36 i'm reading from verse 25 it says in verse 25 then will i sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean that's salvation I'll sprinkle clean water upon you. It's not talking of uh, water from River Jordan. God doesn't take water from River Jordan. This one is water from heaven. It is the water of his cleansing word. And then he says, from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And when he has cleansed you like that and he blots away all the remembrance of your sin, that's salvation. What do we call that? salvation look at verse 26 after that now after he has cleansed them and he said you are clean look at verse 26 a new heart also the word also means i'm going to do another thing yet i've not finished i've cleansed you i've saved you i'm still going to do another thing a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. Tell me, what's that? Sanctification. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 8. In verse 8, is uh, telling us this. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Before you come to verse 8, he has been speaking and he said in verse 3, Blessed are they, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
the salvation. They, those who are poor in spirit and they come to the Lord and they say, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I clinch. I have nothing to pay but my tears forever flow and my zeal no respite no. All these for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone must save. That's the poor spiritual person that is coming and then he comes to the kingdom of God. Look at verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn I am sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my past. That's the repentance. And it says, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. Now that they are forgiven, they are so grateful. There's no pride and they are humble. And it says, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they that do hunger after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. And after all that evidence of salvation, look at verse 8 now. What is in verse 8? sanctification blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see God you see it's very clear from the word of God there is salvation which cleanses our outward life and there is sanctification which makes our heart pure Acts of the Apostles chapter 15 I'm reading from verse 9 Acts of the Apostles chapter 15 and we're reading here from verse 9 it tells us in verse 9 Acts chapter 15 verse 9 and put no difference between us and them, between us Jews and them Gentiles, between us apostles and those in Cornelius' house. He put, he put no difference, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. And he tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, reading here from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 14. It says in verse 14, Follow peace with all men, the salvation. Somebody has the peace in his heart, and he doesn't want to fight anymore. He doesn't want to quarrel anymore. And now he's following peace with all men and holiness. That's the next thing, that's sanctification there. Without which no man shall see the Lord. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 3. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again unto a lively hope. That's salvation. That's salvation. We're begotten. We're born again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that faded not away, reserved for you in heaven. Reserved in heaven for you. Amen. Looks like somebody there is going to get to heaven. Amen. The Lord will not deny you. Amen. Whatever is your way, the Lord will clear away from your sight in Jesus' name. Amen. Who are kept, in verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. That's the final salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. But look at verse 16. Verse 16, and it says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. It's talking about salvation, and now it says there's something more. There is sanctification, and there is holiness. So as we look at the passage we're looking at today, it's in John chapter 17, from verse 20 to verse 26, the glorious privilege of sanctified believers in Christ. There are three parts we're going to uh, deal with as we look at this passage. Number one, the pattern of unity for sanctified, for the sanctified bride. The pattern of unity for the sanctified bride. Point number two, the purpose and usefulness of sanctified believers. You are going to be more useful. The purpose and the usefulness of sanctified believers. Point number three, the potentials and uniqueness of sanctified brethren. The potentials and the uniqueness of sanctified brethren. We come to point number one. In point number one, the pattern of unity 
for the sanctified bride. We're coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. We're reading from verses 20 to 22. Verses 20 to 22. Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. The question is, what name can you give to those people? Look at the disciples of Christ before him. And look at all the people who are going to believe after they give us the word. And God has chosen them. He used Matthew, wrote uh, Matthew, and wrote, somebody wrote Mark, and then Luke wrote Luke, and Acts of the Apostles, and John, and then Paul wrote the Romans, and then all the other epistles. Through them, and through what they are reaching, we have come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know the name we're given? We're the bride were well, the bride of Christ but the wife of Christ and the wife of Christ he wants the body to be united he wants the bride to be united and look at this in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 the way he refers to us as a united body the way he refers to us as the bride of Christ the wife of Christ in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 it says for I am jealous over you for I for with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. That's talking about the body of Christ. That's talking about all the believers. That's talking about the people. They're chaste, they're holy, they're pure, they're sanctified. And it says now they're virgin unto the Lord. Come to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 23. Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 23, talking about the church, talking about the bride. And it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. It's making comparison. It says, you see husband, you see wife, and then you see Christ, you see the church. He is the savior of the body. Verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. You see, he's talking about husband, he's talking about wife, talking about Christ, talking about the church, telling us that the church is the wife, is the bride of Christ. And then he gave himself for it. Why did he give himself for the church? Verse 26, that he might, tell me, sanctify, sanctify, and cleanse it already is the bride of Christ, already is brought to Christ, already he is saved. But now even after that salvation, Christ gave himself for the church that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself. Not an ordinary church, not a denominational church, not a traditional church, not a ritualistic church. He might present it to himself. What kind of church? A glorious church. What does that mean? Not having sport, not having wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Look at verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. We we'll come to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, talking about the church, talking about the believers all together as a congregation, all together as an assembly. And he tells us in chapter 19, Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife, that's the bride, I pray you'll be there. You'll be part of this. Because he saves. If you are saved, I rejoice with you already. He sanctifies. If you are sanctified, I rejoice with you. You are not there. Yeah. If you are not yet saved, thank God tonight salvation has come. Yeah. If you are saved and you are waiting for sanctification, tonight is the night. He'll purify, sanctify you, make you holy in Jesus' name. It says, look at, look at, verse, uh, look at verse 8. It says to her, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. 
clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. This is point one, the pattern of unity for the sanctified bride. I come back to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. There are three things we'll see here. Number one, the pattern. Number two, the power. Number three, the uh, number two, the picture. Number three, the power. Number one, the pattern of the unity of the Son with the Father. The pattern. What pattern are we going to look at when he talks about unity? When he says, look at chapter 17, John chapter 17. I'm reading now from verse 21. John chapter 17, verse 21. It says that they all may be one. What pattern are we going to follow? If we're going to be all one, look at the pattern. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That's the pattern between the Son and the Father. The pattern that Jesus Christ has led for us is say that the Father in him and he in the Father, that they also may be one in us. Then it goes on, look at verse 22, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. That's the pattern. Even as we are one. When you think about believers, believers in a local assembly, one. As Christ and the Father are one. Believers in the whole of the church, like deeper life, one, just one, united together as the Son and the Father are united. And the real believers in all denominations, the same heart, the same mind, the same doctrine, the same goal, the same pursuit, the same heaven, the same destiny, that they all may be one as the Son and the Father are one. That's the pattern. Look at verse 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. And let's look at that pattern very well, the pattern of unity, the pattern of unity of the Son and the Father. Look at John chapter 5 verse 13. John chapter 5 verse 13. It says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. That's the unity between the Son and the Father. No argument between Christ and the Father. And there's uh, no insubordination between Christ and the Father. As the Father desires, as the Father demands, so he did. And so he always does. And he says, I seek not my own will. Self-will is cancelled when we're sanctified because the pattern the Lord has left us is that of Christ and the Father. We're coming to John chapter 8 verse 20. John chapter 8 verse 28 it says when then said Jesus unto them when ye have lifted up the son of man then shall ye know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself but as my father has taught me I speak these things that the unity between Jesus and the Father. As the Father taught him, so he did. As the Father said what to do, that's what he did. Well, he is the Son of God. He is even God himself, and yet, and he's been from all eternity, and his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor. He knows the word of God. In fact, the Pharisees were saying, how knowest this man, the scripture, so much like this, have been never learned. And yet, even with all he knew, he could have been independent. He could I have said, I know what to do. I don't need my father to be telling me this and that. And this is we're being together for all eternity. No, the unity we're talking about, the pattern is a pattern of Christ and the Father. And it says, Look at verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always, I do how often? I do, I said how often? 
I was it if it was any time that Jesus said, okay, but it's too long. Let me take some vacation. Let me have some, let me have some independence from the Father. Never, never. He wanted always to be subjected and submissive to the Father because you know what? He has set the pattern for us of the unity that should be among the believers. And he said, for I do always those things that Please him. Uh, look at First John chapter five, verse seven. First John chapter five. I'm reading from verse seven. In First John chapter five, verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Look at this: the Father, the Word. Who is that? Capital W. I said, who is that? Capital W. The Word and the Holy Ghost. And these three tell me. At one, no disagreement, no argument, no fighting about anything. You know? They are one, no opposition, and not, no, I'm not going to do that today. We're not going to accept that today. The Father has been number one, and the Son has been number two. The Holy Ghost has been number three, and we're going to change it. You know, it's too long now, and then argument never. The angels have never heard argument, uh, you know, from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And uh, the people who are walking at home with you, they will not hear any argument between husband and wife. And your children will not hear any argument between father and mother in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sanctified, sanctified, sanctified. And the Lord has given us a pattern. Number two now, the picture of the unity of, sancti of the sanctified in fellowship. The unity of the sanctified in fellowship. It sanctifies us. It purifies us. And then we remain in a fellowship. What's the picture? We're coming back to John chapter 2. 17 john chapter 17 and i'm reading from verse 20 it says neither pray i for this alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word and so now we are believed on the lord jesus christ and is praying for sanctification and we experience that sanctification what happens then in fellowship between the apostles and the disciples of the past and the leaders and the pastors and the members of the church today look at verse 21 that they all how many of us i said how many of us you know there was no tribalism no and there was no nepotism no and there was no uh, preferences like you know partiality no because it says that they all may be one they all may be one it is not like well yes i'm a i'm a believer i'm even sanctified but that person is from my tribe i'm sanctified but that person is from my local government i'm sanctified but that person we speak the same dialect together and so now that we're deeper like together i'm going to you know favor him with position, favor him with contract, favor him with nothing like that, nothing like that because the Lord Jesus Christ has given us a pattern for the Father and we now have the picture and we follow that picture, the picture of the unity of, of the sanctified in fellowship and it says and that they all may be one as thou Father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me i have given them that they may be tell me one even as we are one even as we are one i in them and thou in me and it says that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me and look at the picture now acts of the apostles chapter 4 verse 32 acts of the apostles chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 32 those early believers see how they did it and see how they brought out the picture and see how they followed the pattern see how the lord helps them it says in acts of the apostles chapter 4 and verse 32 and the multitude of them that believed were tell me of one heart and what of one soul no argument among them no argument among us no disagreement among us no conflict among us uh, some people are not saying amen 
Anybody wanting to fight another believer there? No, never. And it says, the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. That love will reign in our midst. That unity will reign in our midst. And that picture of unity of the sanctified in fellowship, we will see in every local church and in the whole church in Jesus' name. What I have belongs to you. What you have belongs to me. And everything we have in common, and nobody will lack or be in need in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, reading from verse 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that she all, how many of us? I said, How many people? That she all speak the same thing, the sanctification. And then, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Make it practical. Let's say, for example, husband and wife, and they are born again, and they are sanctified. And here, you find it says that they are to speak the same thing not that this one is going to her parents and say something and this the other one is going to his own parents and say another thing and you cannot find unity you cannot find togetherness the same thing with the members and the leaders uh, something is happening and then we need to take a decision this one is saying no this must be this way the other person but look at this look at this point consider this it must no i must have my own way and this one is going this direction that one is going that direction is there sanctification there want to take a simple decision and then we'll say now we'll come together here are the facts of the matter that we are taking and the facts of the matter demand and these are the things that are available to distribute all over this and this one said well it looks like this is the way to do it the other one said i disagree I disagree. I must tell you my mind. I don't want to pretend. Because, uh, you know, I know you want us to say just yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, ma, yes, sir, yes, mama, and whatever. I'm not going to do that. And then this, and then we spend one hour. Something we could have settled in five minutes. Is there sanctification there? No. Sanctification is on paper. Sanctification is in the booklet of the Congress. But when it comes to the heart, it comes to the life, it comes into a relationship together, interaction together. Sanctification must be in our lives. I see it in your life. I pray you will see it in my life. And we will all live the sanctified life together in Jesus' name. If we have made mistakes and, you know, we have argued and we have opposed each other and whatever, all that is buried here tonight. Yeah. Uh, look at verse 10 again. Verse 10 again. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that she all speak the same thing from tonight it will happen. Yeah. And that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment look at ephesians ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 i'm reading here from verse 3 ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace that word endeavoring means doing your best everything you have to do you know the other brother is there he is not she is very quiet and is meek give him chance to talk there's something inside you that wants to okay since he's never talking and she is never going to talk and i have an idea i always have an idea and then i bring it out and then i overshadow everybody and compel everybody follow my way and the other people are just being gentle and they are being simple and uh, so it's okay the meeting is over what i've said is what you are going to do why don't you give chance to the other people endeavor to control that thing inside you that wants always to take the upper hand wants to control the other person wants to beat down the other person it says you endeavor endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace you know it will happen from tonight 
Look at it, uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your fears that you stand fast in one spirit. One spirit. And with one mind. I said one mind. Striving together for the faith of the gospel. I look at chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 1. Philippians chapter 2 verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ. If any comfort of love. If any fellowship of the spirit. If any powers of mercies. Fulfill my joy that ye be like minded. Ye be like minded. Brother, well, if we're sanctified, we should be like minded. And not that, well, I beg to differ. I beg to be different. I don't have that background that two people have. I don't have that idea that two people have. I'm telling you, this is the way I was brought up. And I like to stand like this. Let that I within you be crossed and cancelled. So that it says, you fulfill the joy of the Lord and will be like-minded. Look at, look up here. When you have yam, this yam here, this yam there, this yam there, of different sizes. And then you boil the yam. And you want to prepare pounded yam. You like it? And then you put it inside and you pound everything together. When everything comes out and you put it in the plate, do you know which one is from that farm? Yoruba farm, Igbo farm, Aousa farm, Efik farm. Everything is together. That's the way we ought to be. All those distinctions, all those uh, rough hedges, put them inside the mortar and pound them. And that thing will be delicious to Christ. If we're going to prepare any delicious meal for Christ, all these things that are different, I'm different, and you are different, everything has to go away, and we match everything together. Look at that again in verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others let this mind be you which was also in christ jesus it will happen in your heart it will happen in my heart it will happen in our hearts will be united together Number one, the pattern. Number two, the picture. Number three, the power. The power of the unity of saints for fruitfulness. The power of the unity of saints for fruitfulness. We're coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And we're reading from verse 21. John chapter 17, verse 21. This is the last part of verse 21, the last part, the last line, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That's the purpose. That's the power. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, in the middle part, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. That's what sanctification does. When you are sanctified, I'm sanctified, and then we're united together, we have one accord, and we're serving the Lord together. It says the power of that unity will bring a fruitfulness. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 14. It says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Look at verse 20, verse 16 now. Let your light so shine. Let your light shine when you are saved. Now you are sanctified. Now you have a deeper experience in the Lord. Let your light so shine before men that 
day may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When we have this experience, we'll take the gospel to the world and the people of the world, they'll accept, they'll believe, and they'll turn to the Lord. We're looking at Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Mark chapter 16 I'm reading from verse 15. It says in verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. You are saved. Take the gospel to the world. Now you are sanctified. Take the gospel to the world, and be excited about it. Be happy about it, and then do it with real passion, so that by the grace of God, this gospel will reach the world. Amen. Through you, it will reach the world through me it will reach the world and through us together united what you cannot do i will do what i cannot do you will do and then we'll cooperate together coordinate our works together we're going to reach many in jesus name it tells us in second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 19 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 to which that is to say that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Reconciling the world unto himself. How is he going to reconcile the world unto himself? By sanctified witnesses. By sanctified soul winners. By sanctified members of the, of the church. By, by sanctified a bride of the Lamb. It says reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And has committed unto us. Are you a part of this? Has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The sanctification, as we have seen from the word of God, is uh, it gives us unity. What kind of unity? Number one, purifying unity. Now that we're united together and we're doing some defiling, dirty, foolish things, no, purifying unity. Number two, it's a pleasant kind of unity, pleasant unity. It pleases the Father, it pleases heaven, and it is pleasant and peaceful. Number three, prevailing unity. Whatever we're discussing and whatever we're trying to take a decision, a conclusion on, as you give preference to the other person in honor preferring the other, unity will prevail in our midst. Number one, I said, is prevailing unity. Number two, is a pleasant unity. Number three, is prevailing unity. Number four, peaceful unity. Outsiders will not come and settle quarrel for us. I said that the landlord will not be settling quarrels for our members. Yeah. Look at deeper life member. Look at another deeper life member. And they're living in the same place. And then the landlord will say, ah, you say you are deeper life. And you are fighting like this. You can't choose the same kitchen together. You can't choose the same bathroom together. What's the matter with you? I don't go to deeper life, but you know, I hear of deeper life that they teach holiness there. Is this the holiness they're teaching you there? That will not happen again. Yeah peaceful unity then productive unity a kind of a unity that will bear fruit your local church will grow yeah. i said your local church will grow yeah. because you see as the local pastor there is preaching and the singers are singing and the other workers are also contributing their own part and everybody they're encouraging the newcomers and they're witnessing everybody so the past local pastor saying yes we're going to go this way everybody saying yes we're going to go when that unity is there it will be productive unity then it will be profitable unity profitable unity it's not a kind of a unity that will say well what is the result and where is the goal? What the words unity, unity, unity. Where is the product? It's going to be a profitable unity. It's a persevering unity. No matter the storm, no matter the whatever is happening, we will persevere in that unity. That brother was uh, with our church before. What happens? Well, you know, there was a kind of a problem. And then he went away. And it's good. Let him go. Let him go. Because uh, really, when he was here, or well, all the time, again, and all that, that's not persevering unity. Somebody will run after him. 
somebody will run after her and they will bring her back okay we're sorry we didn't listen to you we're sorry we went astray this way forgive us and then we forgive you and our unity will be persevering in Jesus name it's a permanent unity not temporary unity it's a temporary it's a unity that is there and it is permanent we saw it last week we're seeing it this week again and then I see it now when I come back to you again should I come back when I come back again I'll see that uh, permanent unity in your life in Jesus name your family will not scatter your wife will not leave you your husband will not leave you if there's anything we have not set up before tonight, when you get back home, don't do it in the open. Don't wash your dirty clothes in the open. Don't uh, spread them there. Don't let us know anything. All I know is that you and your wife, you are united. All I know is that you and your husband, you are united. And whatever little roughages we need to straighten out, uh, you know, when you go back home in the private and say, I listened today and I heard what, uh, you know, we're teaching the word of God. I'm sorry for this. That other one will say, I was also thinking about you. I'm sorry. And then we're going to have persuasive unity. Persuasive unity. And that unity will be permanent in our fellowship, in our families, in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number two now. Is the purpose and the usefulness of sanctified believers. The purpose and the usefulness of sanctified believers. You are going to be useful. Yeah. Coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 23 and verse 24. John chapter 17 verse 23. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me look at that look at the kind of unity jesus was praying for and it said there's a purpose for that a purpose for this kind of unity that they'll be made perfect in one not only that that they will the world may know that thou hast sent me and that the world will know that you have loved them even as you have loved Love me father father it says in verse uh, in verse 24 i will that they also whom thou hast given me will be will be with me you'll be with the lord where i am that they may be made that they behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou loved me before the foundation of the world uh, look at uh, john chapter 14 uh, reading from verse 10 john chapter 14 uh, we're reading from verse 10 in john chapter 14 verse 10 it says believest thou that i am in the father and the father in me it was uh, trying telling the disciples he said look at this unity and look at what i've been doing it's because i've been united with the father the words that i speak unto you i speak not of myself but the father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works it's a purposeful unity with the father that the work he was given to do it was done well it was done creditably it was it was done profitably look at verse 23 of that same chapter it's that's chapter 14 verse 23 jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and the father will love him and we the father and the son we the father and the son christ and the almighty god we will come unto him and make our abode with him if there's no disagreeable spirit inside you if there's no conflict inside you he said myself and my father the father and the son will come into you and make our abode with you the almighty will live inside you his power will live inside you. I about high about the Holy Ghost. Look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. It says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Already Jesus said, The Father will dwell in you. 
and then Jesus the Son will dwell in you. Here comes now the third personality of the Trinity, and it says, the Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by spirit that dwelleth in you. I pray it will happen. Look at first John, first John chapter four, first John chapter four, and we're reading from verse twelve. He lives inside us, he abides inside us. We're looking at first John chapter four, verse twelve. It says, No man has seen God at any time. If ye love one another, God dwelleth in us. If you love one another, God dwelleth in us. Look up here. You know, if, uh, for example, now there is a smoke, although there's no real fire that is going to burn anything down, but smoke comes into the whole building. It's difficult to, uh, to breathe. And because of that, if you find a way to go out, you want to go out and go and take some fresh air. The same thing, when some of these things like anger, like bitterness is inside anybody, like a smoke, and God will not like to stay inside that heart or the smoke. And if you want God to stay with you, you want him to abide with you, and you want the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost to be united, abiding with you forever, all the smoke of anger, all the smoke of bitterness, all the smoke of uh, strife, all the smoke of anxiety or whatever, everything will clear away, and then the Father will abide inside you. The Son will abide inside you, and the Holy Ghost will abide inside you in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 12 again. Verse 12, no man has seen God at any time. If ye love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Look at verse 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. You'll experience that. Amen. Verse 16, look at verse 16, and it says, And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. You see what sanctification does, sanctification brings unity and oneness because it cleanses the heart. You see, if we're not united, there's something happening. It's like, you know, when you are driving your car, you have not put the oil where you need to put the oil. And there's a lot of friction. And you are hearing some sound there, some sound there. And then, you know, you're trying to press the brake. The brake is, you know, hanging somewhere. And nothing is working. You know? It's because of the lack of the oil. Where the oil should be. And when there is friction, like in the midst of the people of God, and the unity world to feel is not not there this one is avoiding that that one is throwing away from that that one is not going to say his mind that one is uh, you know suspicious the other one is going to say if you talk now I don't know what they are going to do I want to you know stay in my place I want to know my level I want to know my you know little corner I don't want anybody to trouble me and I will not trouble anybody but there's something in the heart all that the Lord will cleanse away and all the friction, the Lord will cleanse away in Jesus' name. In the heart where there's no sanctification, it's because there's Satan's pride and Satan's nature. Satan said, I will. I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. I will exalt myself above the stars. I will control everything. And that's why he was driven away from heaven. Where there's satanic pride and satanic nature, you'll, find, you'll not find unity there. Where there's self-exaltation self-exaltation he always wants to be above everyone know your level know your the place know the time you came i've been here since uh, you know when they started this uh, church before they made uh, this building i was here where were you so go and sit down when there is an uh, exaltation like that that we're exalting one we're exalting ourselves there will not be any unity but all that will be cancelled when there's sinful criticism nobody ever does anything right only what uh, he does that's the thing that is right when there's sinful criticism 
Nehema, there cannot be unity when there's negative attitude. You know, the fellow is just angry at every, you have not even done anything wrong, and you have not said anything wrong, but the fellow has a negative attitude, a judgmental spirit. is always belittling other people, putting down other people, and cutting down other people. There will not be unity there, and that's because there's no sanctification. But when there's sanctification, sanctification produces love. Somebody say amen. amen. And true love, the true love of God is transparent love. There's no pretense, there's no hanky-panky, and there's no hypocrisy at all. It's transparent love for others. It's total love for everyone. And such a love will result in number one, consecration. Consecration. Because I want the progress of the church. I want the progress of the body of Christ. And I love the church so much. Anything I have which will be of benefit to the church, I lay down. The love will bring consecration number two it will bring compassion you see when i love you i have compassion on you you're suffering you're sick or you're poor you cannot pay your house rent if i have some extra in my pocket i'll not just be holding it there there'll be compassion there will be cooperation cooperation when there's sanctification and there is love we'll cooperate with each other we'll say yes it's our father's work it's our father's work and god is going to be glorified you cooperate with me i cooperate with with you there's no agenda there's no private agenda anywhere it is the work of our father and there will be cooperation where there is love the love we're talking about there'll be conciliation conciliation it will not be difficult to say my brother I, I didn't know you were there I just passed I didn't say hello I'm sorry about that oh no don't worry about that I knew you were you know going somewhere you see there'll be conciliation it will not be like you know and he passed me here he didn't see me here all right, when he comes, when he is passing by again, I'll pay him back in his own coin. And then if he greets me, oh, good afternoon, brother. Mm -hmm. You saw me here now? Did you see me when you passed? What's the matter? Are we fighting? Yeah, we're fighting. Why didn't you greet me at that time? Conciliation. When there is sanctification, somebody give me a good amen. amen there will be condescension, condescension. You know, you will lower yourself for the other person. If you are tall, you don't want us to be, you know, looking up there, looking up there. You are bend down so we can look at each other face to face. There will be condescension. There will be compliance, compliance. You will comply. We said, we're going to go this way. You comply. We're going to do that. We comply because there's sanctification. And then there will be clear, cleansed, and concerned conscience in a place where there's sanctification number one there's no conflict no conflict there's sanctification there's no conflict number two there's no contradiction contradiction if there's some people they just like to contradict somebody says something who is that well sit down are you not a woman don't talk again when we men talk women say yes sir you know but there's contradiction. But when there's sanctification, all that is over. I didn't hear my church. And then there is no contention. Pulling something, dragging something, pushing something, pulling it down. There is no conflict, number one. There's no contradiction, number two. There's no contention, number three. There is no corruption, no contamination. When there's sanctification, there's nothing inside me that will contaminate you. When there is sanctification, there's nothing inside you that will corrupt another person. There's no corruption. There's no conspiracy. When there is, uh, you know, sanctification, we'll plan this behind him. We'll bring him down. That man will bring you, he looks happy, he looks uh, joyful, and he looks on top of the world, but we will show him he cannot remain as happy as that. There's no conspiracy when there is, uh, when there's sanctification, there's no content. Content, belittling other people, looking down on them, what does he know? Where's he coming from? What's he going to do? What's he trying to bring out? There'll be no contempt. There'll be no carnality. No carnality. When there's sanctification, all those things, they're purged away. Sanctification brings maximum usefulness. And you will be useful. And I will be useful. 
and we shall be useful together. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 46, Acts chapter, 40, chapter 2, verse 46, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. That's sanctification, one accord, one accord. They continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. And it says, they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as shall be saved. It will happen again. We're looking at Acts chapter 4, verse 24. Acts chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 24. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. That's the sanctification there. That's the unity there. That's the oneness there. They lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, and thou hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is, the, all that is there. And then it says, Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Pilate, both Herod, and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with what all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching out thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with what? With boldness. Look at verse 32. And the multitude of them, Many of them, thousands of them, the multitude of them that believed were, tell me, of one heart and what? And of one soul, neither said any of them that aught of the things which they possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. It can happen again. Amen. It will happen again. Amen. Look at chapter 5. Chapter 5. We're looking at chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 12. Chapter 5, verse 12. It says, And by the hand of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. That time has come back. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And for the rest, uh, does no man join himself to them, but the people magnify them. And the believers, the believers, the believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and of women. Sanctification is the foundation of all that. Point number three now. In point number three, we have the potentials and the uniqueness of sanctified brethren. The potentials and the uniqueness of sanctified brethren. We're coming back to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 25. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 25. It says, O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. As we look at these potentials, what Jesus said, look at the whole thing now. Number one, intercession for us believers. Look at verse 20. Verse 20, neither pray I for these alone, but for them which shall believe on me through their word. The Lord is praying for you tonight. 
is at the right hand of the Father. And he has you in mind. And he has your concern in mind. And he has your experience in mind. If you are not saved, he's praying for you now. Salvation will come. If you are not sanctified, sanctification will come in Jesus' name. Number one, intercession for us, believers. Number two, influence on the world, impact on the world. Look at chapter 17, John chapter 17, verse 21. It says that they all may be one, as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world tell me. We believe that thou hast sent me, you know, through us as we are sanctified, we are going to impact the world. We are going to influence the world. And many from the world, they are going to come in Jesus' name. Number one, influence on the world. Number two, in, number two, influence on the world. Number one is intercession for us believers. Number three now, look at verse 22. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that, the, that they may be one, even as we are one, indwelt by his glory. Indwelt by his glory. Darkness will vanish away from you. Glory will come into you. Light will come unto you. And as you look at Christ more and more, you'll be changed from one glory to another glory in Jesus' name. Indwelt by glory. Look at uh, the next verse. We're looking at uh, verse 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. That is, we're infused by the Godhead infused by the Godhead. He dwells inside us. He abides inside us. He remains inside us. And great power will be manifested even through your life in Jesus' name. Look at number 5 in verse 24. Verse 24, the Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me may be with me. You'll be with the Lord where I am is go to heaven and it says in my father's house are many mansions if it wasn't so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for somebody there for who you'll be in heaven it's preparing a place for you and you pray to the father sanctify them so that they will see my glory and where I am they will be also I will be there that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, and for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. That's inheritance in heaven. Inheritance in heaven. You have an inheritance there. You will get there. I said you will get there. I know you are writing. You write with the hand. You answer with the mouth. I said you will get there. Uh, look at look at this we're looking at uh, verse 25 now inspired information and revelation the kind of revelation that these people had and only these people had and the world did not have a said oh righteous father we're looking at verse 25 righteous father the world has not known thee but i have known thee and uh, it says and these have known that thou have sent me they had knowledge that other people did not have revelation that other people did not have they had information that other people did not have look at uh, verse 26 now, verse 26 and i have declared unto them thy name and will declare thy name and will declare it and then it says that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and i in them identical love for sanctified selfless sin you see the same love that the father has for the son that he has for the lord jesus christ the same love he had for the believers and that's what jesus was praying love them in the same way show them the same love manifest the same love unto them i pray that this will be your experience in jesus name 
the Lord is praying for us. Look at Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 34. Romans chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 34. He makes the intercession for us. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for them. He find that the same love you find in the, in the Son, you find that also in the, in the believers. We're looking at Romans chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 34. Romans chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 34. It says, who is see that condemneth it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who even is at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us make it personal maketh intercession for me make it personal is making it a session for us and he prays for us that will be sanctified he prays for us that will be holy and god the father always answers the prayer of the lord jesus christ and the lord will answer the prayer over you in jesus name in hebrews chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 25 wherefore is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever live it to make it a session for us even right now it's at the right hand of the father and he's making intercession for you and then he says because of that intercession you become useful profitable instrumental in the hand of the lord in bringing souls into the kingdom we're looking at a john chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 17 john chapter 3 verse 17 he says for god sent not his not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him him might be saved. He is not here now. You are his hands, you are his feet, you are his mouth, you are his eyes, and you are his ears. You are the people to go around representing Christ, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ everywhere, and to preach the gospel and what Christ would have been doing. If Christ were here right now, that's what you are going to be doing, and souls are going to get saved through you in Jesus' name. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 6. Acts chapter 17 we're reading from verse 6 and it says and when they found them they drew jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crying these uh, these uh, they, uh, these that have turned the world upside down are uh, come hither also looks like you are going to have that dynamic power that dynamic effectiveness and you'll be part of those that will go into all the world touching lives and turning them to the lord turning the world upside down in jesus name and he dwells us with glory sanctifies us purifies us and makes us holy and indwells us with glory we're looking at hebrews chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 10. hebrews chapter 2 and we're reading here from verse 10. it tells us in verse 10 for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory what's he bringing you to I said, what is he bringing you to? Bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. And as you look on Christ and you are looking at Christ tonight, he will turn you from glory to glory in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, but we all, how many of us now? But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed to the same, into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And now we're indwelt by the Lord, by the Father, by the Son, and by the Holy Ghost. He dwells within us. It tells us in First John, First John, reading from chapter 4. First John, reading from chapter 4, and reading from verse 12, it says, No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us he'll dwell in you and you know Satan and God cannot be in the same place at the same time if God is there Satan is out demons are out evil powers are out principalities and powers are out look at verse 13 verse 13 hereby you know we that we dwell in him and he in us he in us he in us because he has given us of his spirit and then he says heaven is for you yeah. for me 
I said for me. For me. Look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13. We're reading here from verse 12. It says in verse 12, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, that he might purify the people, that he might make the people holy with his own blood suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Yeah. Are you looking for that city? Yeah. I said, are you looking for that city? Yeah. Well, be there. Yeah. In First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept are you part of this who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time, in the last time, he will reveal that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Then he says that those disciples had something, they knew something that ordinary people, the people on the street and people in their synagogues did not know. He's giving us real revelation and information and impartation from heaven. He tells us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 27, all things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father save except the son, and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. He'll reveal him to you today. You'll never be the same again. I'll never be the same again. He gives us also identical love as we become selfless, sanctified, and we're able to lay everything on the altar. He grants us love like he loved the Father. In John chapter 15, John chapter 15, we're reading from verse 9. John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. You'll continue chapter 14 verse 20 chapter 14 verse 20 at that day shall ye know that I am in the father and ye in me and I in you Colossians uh, Galatians chapter 1 chapter 2 Galatians chapter 1 chapter 2 rather Galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 I am crucified with Christ it will happen Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Where is Christ? I say, where is Christ? He is Savior. If he lives in us, he will totally separate us from sin and save us from sin and cleanse us from sin and set us free from sin. He is sanctifier. If he lives inside us, he sanctifies us, he purifies us, he makes us righteous and holy, ready for heaven. And he says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, is this talking about you? And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, tell me, who loved me and gave himself for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Tonight, it will be fulfilled more and more in Jesus' name. Tonight, we'll see the pattern of unity. Tonight, we'll see the picture of unity. Tonight, we'll see the power of unity. We'll see the purpose and the usefulness of the unity of sanctified brethren and the bride of Christ. And we'll see the potentials and the uniqueness of those as sanctified brethren. And it's now for us to pray it in, to make it happen, so that the knowledge will not just be in our head, it will not just be in our mind, it will not just be on paper, it will not just be in the Bible, it will be transferred into our hearts and as we tell the Lord that everything I've heard today everything I've learned today everything I've read today in the word of God I want it inside my heart it is going to happen 
the Lord is praying for you already. And as we join your prayer to the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you need salvation, he'll save you. So if you need forgiveness, he'll forgive you. If you need restoration, he will restore you. He loves you. He doesn't want you to continue in that condition. If you need sanctification, that's his specialty. He will purify your heart tonight in Jesus' name. Let's rise up. Let's rise up and really, really, really pray unto the Lord and tell the Lord tonight, oh Lord, here am I, oh Lord, here am I, let it be done in my heart, let it be done in my heart. He prayed and provided for your sanctification, he prayed and provided for your purity of heart, he wants to do it right there, he wants to do it right there, and he wants to bring the unity, the unity, unity with the Father, unity with the Son, and unity with the body of Christ. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, when you have this a sanctification, there will be deeper humility. When you have this sanctification, there will be deeper holiness. When you have this sanctification, there will be deeper honesty, transparency in your life. A happier home, a happier family, there will be higher honor, there will be heavenly mindedness, and there will be heavenly hope. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, he wants to do it. He wants to do it. You must be able to say, that was the day when I was sanctified. That was the time, the hour when I was sanctified. You must be able to say, that was the study that brought me into sanctification, into sanctification, into the holiness experience. He wants to do it right there. He wants to do it right there. If you tell the Lord, he answers prayer, he answers prayer, you lay everything upon the altar. You consecrate everything. You give everything unto him. You say, Lord, nothing reserved and no, no reservation. I lay everything on the altar. I want you to touch my heart, transform my heart, and I want you to sanctify my spirit. Do it, Lord. He will do it. He will do it. He delights in sanctifying his own people. He will do it for you. He'll do it for you. And then he'll bring the result in your life. There'll be unity. Unity with God. Unity with Christ. And unity with the word of God. Unity with the doctrine. There'll be unity with the people of God. You tell the Lord, tell the Lord, do it for me, Lord. Do it for me, Lord. And then all the disunity in your family, all the disunity in your community, all the disunity in your yard, you don't see eye to eye with that one, eye to eye with that one, and all big eye and little you, all the contempt and all the confrontation, everything will be wiped away, will be wiped away. The real sanctification experience, there will be no anger in your heart and there will be no bad attitude in your life. You will not be having conflict with other people as the Lord sanctifies you and purifies you. He will make you to come to the pattern, the pattern, the pattern of the Son or the Father of the son or the father you'll be a pure bride of christ a beautiful bride of christ a holy bride of christ a washed bride of christ you'll be whiter than snow whiter than snow in your heart whiter than snow in your mind whiter than snow in your disposition whiter than snow in your thoughts whiter than snow he'll do it he'll do it call upon him call upon him because the blood of jesus christ cleanses us from all sin internal cleansing internal purification the lord will do it let him do it let him do it let him do it tell the lord and believe the lord believe the promises of god he has promised he said i'll cleanse them i'll wash them i'll sprinkle clean water upon them and they shall be clean and then he says i'll take the stony heart out of their flesh and i'll give them a heart of flesh I give them a heart of flesh. He can do it. He can do it. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men. You'll be able to do that. Sanctification assures us there'll be the peace of God and the God of peace reigning in your heart. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. He'll give you the picture. And you begin to practice it at home. Husband and wife, unity. Parents and children, unity. Members and pastors in the church, unity in the community believers like you you'll be united with them and there will be no conflict uh, believers like you you'll be united with them there'll be no contradiction believers like you you'll be united with them there'll be no contention there'll be no corruption and there'll be no conspiracy there'll be no contempt there'll be no carnality and there'll be no contamination you tell the lord tell the lord oh lord here am i today here am i today do it in my life do it in my heart do it in my soul do it in my spirit and in the inner man make the inner man pure make the inner man 
man holy. Make the inner man whiter than snow. Let him do it. Let him do it. And then there will be consecration. Consecration. There will be nothing you are holding back from the Lord. There will be consecration. You lay everything on the altar. There will be compassion. There will be compassion. There will be sympathy with those who are suffering. There will be sympathy with those uh, who are going through hard times. When there's sanctification, you'll not be thinking of your own selfish, of your own self alone. There will be no selfishness. You'll be thinking of other people. There will be cooperation. Cooperation. Because, uh, you see, uh, sanctification will take away, knock out, or wash away all the contradicting things uh, between you and other people. There will be cooperation. There will be consideration. Reconciliation. There'll be conciliation. Reconciliation too. When there's real sanctification, you have love towards everything, everyone, and you have sympathy for everyone, and you have a kind of a cooperative, a green spirit with everyone. There'll be condescension. Condescension. You come from that ivory tower, you humble yourself, you, you belittle yourself, and you come low and you become meek. When there's sanctification, and there is a compliance, there is a clear conscience, there's, there's a cleansed conscience. And and it's a concerned conscience, you are concerned for other people. There'll be no corruption, there'll be no conspiracy, there'll be no contempt, there'll be no contention, there'll be no contradiction, there'll be no conflict, there'll be no confrontation when there's sanctification. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the holy in heart. Blessed are the sanctified in heart, for they shall see God. You have clean hands, and then you have a pure heart. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. He can do it for you tonight. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be sanctified. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be pardoned. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be purified. Let him do it. Let him do it. And then he'll empower you, energize you to go forth and win the world, your own world, and the people around you unto the Lord. Let him do it. He can do it. He will do it. He will do it. He cannot fail. He answers prayer. The Lord is praying for you, making intercession for every believer. The Lord is praying for you, making intercession for every believer. And he's going to make you have impact on your world, influence on your world. Your word will carry weight. Your word will carry anointing. Your word will influence other people. Your word will bring them to conviction and to conversion. Your word will make them get on their knees and seek the face of the Lord. And he wants to put more glory, greater glory in your life. More glory, greater glory in your life. More glory, more glory. As we look at him, as we look to him, and he lifts us up, and we move from one glory to another glory. One glory to another glory. And then the head, the Godhead will live inside you. The Father inside you. The Son inside you. The Holy Ghost inside you. He'll quicken you in your spirit. Quicken you in your soul. Quicken you in your body because he lives and because he abides in you. Tell the Lord, tonight is the night of answered prayer. Tonight is the night of answered prayer. Let him do it. Let him do it. He's ready to do it. He will infuse you with a Godhead. He will prepare a place for you in heaven. An inheritance in heaven. An inheritance in heaven. An inheritance in heaven, that's what he'll give. He'll give you more revelation about Christ as Savior, as Redeemer, as a substitute. He'll show you he's died for you on the cross of Calvary. Your substitute, your sanctifier. He'll reveal the depth of the love of God for Christ unto you. Because he does that in your life now. Does that in your life now. Believe. Stand on the promises. Those promises can never fail. Accept those promises. Believe those promises. The promise of cleansing. The promise of sanctification. The promise of holiness without which no man shall say the Lord. The promise of writing his word in your very heart. So the grace, 
the strength, the enablement to carry out everything he has revealed, it will happen in your heart. He answers prayer. Crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live, life of holiness, the life I now live, life of sanctification, the life I now live, life of peace, the life I now live, life of love, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He loves you. Gave himself for you. That you might be saved. That you might be sanctified. Purified. Made holy. Believe the Lord to be unto you according to your faith. Remember this day, the day of it, the manifestation of his love in your heart. The day of the demonstration of his Calvary love in your heart. Cleansing purging, purifying, sanctifying, and bearing witness in your heart that it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the believing people of God said, Amen. You have prayed, haven't you? Amen. The Lord has answered. Amen. I said, The Lord has answered. Amen. You see the demonstration in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure you are not under the fan when you are raising up your hand. Raise up your hand, but look up if there's a fan there. Mind your hand. Praise the Lord. No accident in your life. No disaster in your life. No tears and no sorrow. Are you ready? Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you, Lord, for your people, faithful people. People who hack into your word and people who have received your word. I pray, Lord, every promise that you have given us and the intercession of Jesus will be effective, effectual in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Those who have confessed their sins to you, Lord, I pray, forgive them fully, freely, permanently in Jesus' name. Take guilt away. Take condemnation away and take all the doubt away from their hearts in Jesus' name. Give them assurance of salvation, freedom from sin, and the power to go and live in newness of life in Jesus' name. Make them as white as snow. I pray for those who have prayed for sanctification, purity of heart. I pray, Lord, you make them whiter than snow in Jesus' name. I pray the double cleansing you'll do for them. The sanctification you'll give to them. And the purifying with the blood of Jesus. Effect it in their lives in Jesus' name. Abide inside them. And give them a higher power. 
a higher understanding, a higher revelation, a holier, deeper experience in Jesus' name. In their home, holiness. In their heart, holiness. In their behavior, holiness. In their character, holiness. In their interactions, holiness. In the place of work, holiness. Anywhere they go, the holiness of Christ will beam out through them in Jesus' name. Confirm the word of sanctification in the believers in Jesus' name. And help us to see the fruit in our family. See the fruit in our evangelism. See the fruit in our local churches. And see the fruit of unity all over the church in Jesus' name. That same pattern of unity between the Father and the Son, give unto your church. And that picture of real unity in all the believers in fellowship, give it to your church. And Lord, we pray the power to remain productive and persuasive. And uh, we have uh, this uh, progress in unity and usefulness. Confirm it in every life, Lord. I pray that the blessings you have given today to every one of your children, young and old, workers and leaders and members and invitees, I pray that this blessing will be permanent upon everyone. As your people go back home, we're going back with the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord will be the strength of everyone. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you and God bless you.